السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless you and your entire family. If you have just joined us on Deen TV, we will be learning about the lessons and the life of the Ashara Mubashara, the famous 10 companions of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And we will be learning on the fifth companion that has been granted paradise by the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. But before that, let's each and every one of us Praise and venerate the beloved Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Mawlaya salli wa sallim daiman abada ala habibika khayril khalqi kul. Lihimi mawlaya salli wa... That's not going to do. My brothers and sisters, you need to recite together with me and let us feel that love of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So together, Mawlaya salli wa sallim daiman abada ala habibika khayri al-khalqi kullihimi ya rabbi bil مصطفى بلغ ما قاسدنا يا ربي بالمصطفى بلغ ما قاسدنا واغفر لنا ما مضى يا واسع الكرام مولاي صل وسلم دائما عبدا على حبيبك خير الخلق كله مي الحمد لله and let us learn on the beautiful lifestyle of that fifth companion that was granted the mentioning or granted the ticket of Jannah on this very earth we have learned in the previous the lifestyles and the message and the, the birth and the facts on the life of the Khulafai Rashidin, the famous four companions of the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam upon whom we have learned and we have made niyyah that we can insha'Allah try to act upon their sunnah. For the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam has mentioned that indeed follow me and follow the sunnah of my khulafa and you will be guided. In another narration he has mentioned, As-Sahabi kan nujum bi-ayyihim iqtadaytum ihtadaytum aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa taslim That my companions are like stars, whichever one of them you follow, you will be guided. So indeed, we learned on the lifestyle of Sayyidina Amirul Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiyallahu ta'ala an. The beautiful companion of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the second next to the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the first khalifa of Islam, the father-in-law of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, and the friend of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam at the time when no one befriended him. And the personality who first accepted, the, who, the first man to accept Islam, and amongst him, he is the first person to accept the mi'raj or the ascension of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa various other qualities. And this is just a recap of what we have learned, alhamdulillah. And we learned about Sayyidina Umar al-Farooq, Amir al-Mu'mineen, radiyallahu ta'ala an. That very great companion of Islam, that was a stalwart for Islam, that was a personality that would differentiate good from bad, a personality who lived his life in accordance to the Sharia, the Sharia practice by Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Sayyidina Umar al-Khattab, the giant of Islam, that had the most uh, uh, huge rule, and that personality who never gave up justice, a personality who would 
fight or would carry out justice even if it meant against his own kith and kin, even if it meant against his own children, his spouse or anyone related to him. This was Sayyidina Umar al-Farooq radiallahu ta'ala and such a great companion of Islam and he has been granted also paradise by the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And then we learn the lifestyle of Sayyidina Osman, Osman Ghani radiallahu ta'ala an. This great companion of Islam, that personality who the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says, if I had more daughters, then I would have got them one after the other married to Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan radiallahu ta'ala an. A personality who made strides for the religion of Islam and for the Muslim Ummah who donated and gave generously everything that he owned and everything, every single moment he did something only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to attain the closeness to the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allahu Akbar. And he was also granted Jannah. And then we spoke about Amirul Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Ali ibn Abi Talib, Karrama Wajahul Kareem, the great companion of Islam, Sayyidina Mawla Ali, that personality whom the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had mentioned on several occasions, the, the, uh, the worth or the caliber of Sayyidina Amirul Mu'mineen, Sayyidina Ali Karam Wajhul Kareem, amongst them the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said that indeed I am from Ali and Ali is from me. The beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam said, Ana madinatul ilm wa aliyun babuha, aw kama qala alayhi salatu wa taslim, that I am the city of knowledge. And Ali is the door to that city of knowledge. The beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam spoke to us about various qualities of Sayyidina Mawla Ali. Mawla Ali karamawajhul kareem. And alhamdulillah, he too was granted the certificate of Jannah on this earth. When I say certificate, there was no presentation of a certificate that we would stand and maybe Sayyidina Mawla Ali would take a selfie. No, my brothers and sisters in Islam. It was the confirmation of from the lips of Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this was sufficient to ensure that this will be a ticket in Jannah. Allahu Akbar. So these were the four companions that we learned of their lives over the past Almost, uh, if, I, if it serves me correct, almost for the past five months, we have learned on the lifestyle of these four great companions of Islam. And Alhamdulillah, we are now going to learn, tonight we are going to learn the lessons of this beautiful, beautiful saint of Islam, beautiful Sahabi Rasul Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, blessed companion of the beloved Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And it is none other than Sayyidina Talha ibn Ubaidullah, also pronounced as Hazrat Talha ibn Ubaidillah radiallahu ta'ala an, the great companion of Islam, Allahu Akbar. He is that personality that was born in the year 594 and he left and passed on in the year 656, thus making 62 years of age at the time of his passing on. He is that companion of Islam that when the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was to get married to Sayyidina, Sayyidatina Ummul Mu'mineen Khadijatul Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha, then at that time this great companion of Islam was born, Sayyidina Talha. He was born only at the time when the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married Sayyidina Khadijatul Kubra radiallahu ta'ala anha. He was this personality that he was also a very, very staunch companion of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was drowned in the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was drowned in the love of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam to such an extent that the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would mention that he is a walking shahid on this earth. Where it is quoted in Tirmidhi Sharif where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says in Tirmidhi Sharif, hadith number 3739, as well as in Ibn Majah Sharif, hadith number 125, it is quoted where Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had mentioned that indeed, if anyone wishes to look for a shahid on this working earth, then know that it is Talha. In another narration in Tirmidhi Sharif, as well as Ahmad Sharif, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam has mentioned that Talha has made paradise wajib upon himself. Allahu Akbar. Can you imagine when the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam himself makes this statement? 
He is this great companion of Islam. Sayyidina Talha ibn Ubaidullah radiallahu ta'ala an. That he's growing up. He saw what the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was doing. He grew up in the presence of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he would take lessons. And he would want to give his life. And he would want to give everything for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. His role model was none other than Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was drowned in the love of this great leader of Islam. Allahu Akbar. It is this great companion of Islam that made a clapping sound to the sounds and the echoes of Islam when Sayyidina Talha entered the fold of Islam and when Sayyidina Talha shook the hands of the beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam and he took allegiance that oh muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam i will protect you and i accept you as the messenger of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala i believe in allah and there is no deity but allah la ilaha illallah muhammadur rasulullah this was an a very emotional moment for the muslims of for the muslim ummah for the muslims at large and alhamdulillah, it is quoted in this beautiful, very beautiful book written by Muhammad Siddiq Al-Manshawi. He writes in his beautiful book regarding the companions and regarding the leader of the companions, Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, that Sayyidina Talha was that personality that in his early childhood, he would sacrifice his time, he would sacrifice his play for others. He would want others to have a smile instead of himself. He would worry and he would share from a very tender age. And he got his education and he had a keenness for education. He wanted to study all the time. He wanted to study. And it came to a time when Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala an, he became a young man. And when Sayyidina Talha became a young man, then he wanted to follow the true teachings and that was the teachings of Islam. Allahu Akbar. He lived as a true person who bared the testimony. Therefore, Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa had given him a title. And this, my brothers and sisters in Islam, is not a title given by any man. Hey, we are Mawlana and Allama and Shaykh and Qutb and Ghaus. No. This is a title given to him by the beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam that Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam said Talha is a shahid. Allahu Akbar. One who bears testimony. Sayyidina Talha ibn Ubaidullah radiallahu ta'ala an, the great companion of Islam. His actions were so good. His actions were so worthy that the beloved sallallahu alayhi wasallam had mentioned that Jannah has become wajib for him. He is this companion of Islam that the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam loved. And the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made dua for. And he is this companion that always took care of the family of the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Amongst many things, he was a great soldier of Islam. And he was this personality that we can learn from very briefly. That Sayyidina Talha also given the title Al-Khair. Talha Al-Khair. What it means? Talha, the good one. And he was given this title. He was amongst the first Muslims and whose wings took him in the light of Islam. He was amongst those who never just choose Islam, but Islam chose him. Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala an is this personality that was from amongst the Ashara Mubashara, those that were given glad tidings of Jannah. And he is also amongst the famous six companions upon whom the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made as the Shura group, the six men Shura, the strong six. He was amongst this group. Whenever the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would make Shura, then he was amongst them. He was amongst the wisest of the Quraysh. And the call of faith was louder in his heart than the trumpets of richness and any wealth. He gave up all his wealth. He gave up his uh, whatever possessions he had only for the pleasure of Allah. That no, this is not for me. I want to be 
the follower of Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, and he gave his entire time, his life, his wealth, his everything for Islam. Alhamdulillah. He defended the beloved sallallahu alaihi wasallam very bravely. In fact, it is said that whenever he defended the Nabi sallallahu alaihi wasallam, one hand would be in battle. Whilst the other hand would be safeguarding Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So many times he had to face death in the sense that death approached him closely. Yet he never ran away. He was not a coward. He was one that stood with full conviction of whatever he believed. Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala an was a personality upon whom the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had spoken good of even at the time when the Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam passed on till the last moment you did not hear from the lips of Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a complaint about Sayyidina Talha ibn Ubaidullah Talha al-Khair Talha the good one he was very generous and if he had anything with him then he would give it he spent to please the needy Sayyidina Jabir radiallahu ta'ala an, the famous companion Sayyidina Jabir radiallahu ta'ala an, he states, I have never seen a person give before someone asks more than Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala an. Sayyidina Talha was that companion that before someone could ask, he would give. Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala an, it is mentioned, that once he received from Hadr al-Maut 700,000 dirham. Yes, you heard me right. In that time, 700,000 dirham. And he could not sleep properly. And his wife, the beautiful wife, Umm Kulthum. Umm Kulthum was, in fact, the sister of Umm al-Mu'mineen, Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha which made Sayyidina Talha that Sayyidina Talha was married to the daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an. Sayyidina Talha was the son-in-law of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an. And Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala an was like a brother-in-law to the beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for indeed the Habib sallallahu alayhi wa sallam married the one daughter of Abu Bakr radiallahu ta'ala an and Sayyidina Talha married the other daughter of Sayyidina Abu Bakr as-Siddiq radiallahu ta'ala an it is in fact that when this 700,000 dirham came to him he was uneasy until his wife Umm Kulthum said Oh, my husband, you are not used to wealth. Why don't you call the companions and why don't you distribute it to them? Allahu Akbar. Tell me, brothers and sisters in Islam, which, which mother of Islam or which lady of Islam would say this today? Allahu Akbar. Illa ma sha Allah, except a very few. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant them more strength. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make our woman like the woman of Islam. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow our women's hearts to inspire our hearts. And made the men and women both serve for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahu Akbar, when the wife of Sayyidina Talha says this, Sayyidina Talha goes and he distributes, and he distributes, and he distributes, and he gives out, and he gives out, and he gives out. Allahu Akbar, 700,000 dirham. At that time, 1400 years ago, try to keep in your mind how rich was Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala an. And he gives it. He says, every Muslim who is in need and every Muslim who I can empower, come forward. And Sayyidina Talha distributes. No questions asked. He distributes. For it is the wealth from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Until when the wife taps Sayyidina Talha and says, oh my husband, I'm asking, are you going to leave anything for us? Is there going to be anything left for us? And Talha smiles and he says to his wife, he says, Umm Kulthum, the daughter of Abu Bakr, ta'ala, why did you not remind me 
if you reminded me, I would have kept some. But nevertheless, there's one bag left. Take it for you, oh my wife. And he gave it to his wife. What do we learn from this, my brothers in Islam? We learn from this that indeed it is the giving that drowned them so much in the love of Rasulullah and the love of Allah, so much so that he gave and gave and gave that he even forgot himself until he was reminded that, oh Talha, keep for us as well. Allahu Akbar. It is mentioned that on another occasion, Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala an, he had approximately 400,000 dirham. He had 400,000 dirham. And he distributed it to the Muslim Ummah. And on one occasion, there was a person that wanted some wealth in the family. You know, this was giving to normal people. But to his family, if any of his family was in need, and they went to Sayyidina Talha, and he had, then Wallahi, he would give in such a manner. Just listen to this one example that I wish to quote and narrate to you. It is mentioned that Sayyidina Talha was once asked by his cousin and the cousin asked him, and the cousin said, listen, I'm in need, O Talha, I come to you in the name of our family. I come to you with the wasila of our family relation, that I need your assistance. Allahu Akbar. Sayyidina Talha says to this man, says to his cousin, says to his family member that, listen, if you are in need, then Talha will be at your rescue. Talha will be there by you. I have a land that I was offered by Sayyidina Uthman ibn Affan, Uthman Ghani, Amir al-Mu'mineen radiallahu ta'ala an. And he offered me 300,000 dirham for this land. I have not yet accepted his proposal. And because you are my family member and you are in need, I say to you, why don't you take the land for you? And if you don't want the land, then take the offer of Uthman Ghani and you can sell the land and the money will be yours. I do not want a share of this money. The money will be yours. And the man chose that he will take the money so he could invest it and he could support his family. And just the thought of this made Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala an, a person that was full of happiness and he was overwhelming with joy. Can you imagine? Allahu Akbar. We can now realize, my brothers and sisters in Islam, dear viewers, we can now understand that my respected audience, Islam was not based on money. Islam is not our bank accounts. Islam is not how much money we have. Yes, you need money for Islam, but you need a heart like these Sahaba radiallahu ta'ala anhum ajma'in, who gave everything for the love of Islam, who gave everything to empower Islam. Their giving was even for Islam. Their taking was even for Islam. Their living was also for Islam. Everything they did in their life was only for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and to attain the closeness of his beloved Sayyidina wa Mawlana Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Try to imagine. Allahu Akbar. There was once an occasion where he was distributing approximately Sayyida Sa'ada said that a, disc, uh, that a slave disclosed that on one day he started in the morning and he continued distributing wealth till the evening and over 400,000 dirham he gave just to the poor. He gave until the line never stopped. He gave until the line was finished. Meaning until where he could see there was a line, but he constantly gave and gave and gave. And not for show. Not so someone can say, oh Talha, mashallah, you're such a great personality. No. Or give him a, a, you know, a tap. Or give him an accolade. Or give him a medal. No. Talha did it solely for the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talha. What a great companion of Islam. Amongst the companions whom Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam had mentioned that he has made Jannah wajib for himself. Allahu Akbar. 
he also had the good will of giving to Say Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha every year a gift of 10,000 dirhams. Every year he would give her 10,000 dirhams because she was Ummul Mu'mineen, the mother of the believers, and she was the beloved wife of Sayyidina wa Habibina Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This was the beauty of Sayyidina Talha radiallahu ta'ala an. He became shaheed in the battle of Jamal, the battle that was fought, and he became shaheed at the battle side to side to Sayyida Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us the tawfiq that we may be like these companions and his blessed body rests in the city of Basra. We make dua, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that we may learn from these shining stars of Islam. So join me next week where we will learn about the great companions of Islam and the shining stars of Islam. Until then, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.